Hello friends. I thought it might be amusing to anyone who is watching at the start of this one to see exactly how much of my life I've wasted on this very fun video game, which I've actually hated for about 20 hours in the middle there. Oh, maybe even 40 hours? Like, there was a pretty big window of not having a good time. So that, uh, that 90 hours is a little bit misleading. It's closer to around 80 hours, uh, if you count up all of the times I have foolishly left my game running and wandered off to have lunch and then completely forgotten about it and then come back and found myself standing sadly in the rain next to a point of grace with a lonely expression on my face. Oh well if you want to set up a if you want to set up a password and try and fight me then that's absolutely fine with me. Just let me know how you want to do that. So when I was playing earlier, I uh, on a silent stream with no no commentary, I uh, well I beat General Radan and then he put a big hole in Eastern Limgrave for fun. He apparently really was holding back the stars in the sky, which means that the night sky now has stars in it again, but also one of them fell to Earth here, which knocked a big hole in Limgrave down to Nokron, the Eternal City, which is where the Hi Lisa, which is where the rest of the current plotline I'm playing through takes place. It took me a while to figure out how to get down here. Turns out floating rocks, uh, just a thing. Gravity magic only works for rocks, not for the me, so fell to my death many times trying to figure that out. But fortunately, there is a secret sneaky way in. So the plotline that I'm currently progressing is Actually, is my mic on properly? Yeah, no, we're all set up fine. It's all good. I didn't need to worry. Uh, yeah, the plot line I'm currently progressing is essentially what I think to be one of the various ways to get different endings. That's, I guess, based on my experience with previous FromSofts, there's usually a very clear, direct main quest line that pulls you through the game and ultimately betrays you in some way at the end. And then there's usually a secret alternate ending, which sometimes is very difficult to find and uncover. I suspect that in Elden Ring, there's going to be like three, maybe four of those main path options, and they'll be a lot more clear and obvious to uncover. The thing that we're being told to do is go become the Elden Lord. And to do that, you go murder everybody who's got a big sigil, gather up their various sigils, and then you do something with them and restore the Elden Ring and with it the Golden Order and return everything to normal existence. Um, the alternative to that, uh, yes, and that's directed by a godlike mythic figure called the Two Fingers, which is literally two fingers of a severed hand, wiggling endlessly into the air and interpreted endlessly by a succession of interpreters who are probably lying about what the fingers are telling me to do, or possibly making the whole thing up in order to get me to do stuff. So, oh boy. These things have a remarkably sort of like mid-2000s rave flyer kind of CG art aesthetic, and I'm, I'm absolutely here for it, but it's also surprisingly in... surprising to see that sort of thing in a fantasy game. Anyway, so the second, the second plot line involves finding the Volcano Manor and the people who live there and do what uh, I assume to be is directly counter to what the Golden Order or the Erd Tree or the Elden Ring want, or Divine Grace possibly also, and are, are intending to fight against the Tarnished, which is the kind of person that you are, in order to achieve the opposite of whatever should be happening. There's also somewhere hidden the three fingers, which I assume is the rest of the hand, uh, which are connected in some way to chaos and connected in some way to fire or, re or representations of fire. It's possible that fire has two completely separate and unrelated thematic meanings in this setting. The flames of uh, madness of cha uh, and chaos being, being one thing and sort of elemental fire in and of itself coming from the crucible from which all life originated is a, a completely different chunk of cosmology as far as I can tell. Oh here, I've got slime splattered all over me. Lovely. So those are the three... The first two of those paths I've encountered. The third of those paths I have not yet encountered, but I've heard that somewhere under the capital, which is over here, 
which I haven't started exploring yet. I'm just exploring this region mostly at the moment. Um, anyway, so as an aside to all of that, I've also run into someone who has this whole long complicated quest chain to do with sorcery. And um, is possibly yet another alternative way to complete the game. I don't know. I won't find out until later. But that's the quest line I've been trying to... Oh, the towers, uh, the tower branching off from Stormvale Castle is one of the, um, I'm not sure what they're called, but they're, each one of the great runes has a tower associated with it, and in order to unlock the power of the great rune, you, you have to climb the tower and activate something, and each of those towers has a chunk of fingers at the top of it, so I'm already up to four fingers, you know, I'm two different sets of two fingers, I don't really know how these fingers interrelate to each other. I had an idea very early on that this unseen and often mentioned god, um, Marika, has, uh, you know, I thought perhaps the only thing that's actually really called a god is Marika, perhaps this is her hand that we have met wiggling away in the round table hold, and um, perhaps her hand was severed at some point and split in half, and so the last, like, vestige of divinity is residing in these severed fingers wiggling there prophetic messages away, and uh, if I land in that flower patch, I think I should be fine. <laughs> oh, these are new. I haven't seen this enemy type before, I'm not sure what their deal is. Oh, it's fine. They are no trouble whatsoever. Oh, oh. oh, there's always a hidden one in a corner. So, yeah, what I've learnt... Um, the reason why I'm not wearing shoes is because I have been min-maxing my equipment weights quite a lot, and I actually I can put some shoes on if you like. I, I definitely know that there are people watching this stream who would definitely prefer if my character does not put shoes on. So, if you like, we can consider it to be a, uh, a little present for those of you who are inclined that way. That said, Miyazaki reference is funnier than anything I could possibly have said. So, uh, props to you. Also, shout out to my buddy Alice, whose birthday it is. Happy birthday. Anyway, what the fuck was I talking about? Um, oh yeah, so, uh, a mysterious and somewhat childlike witch, basically, says, hey, do you want to serve me instead of all of these other dipshits who are telling you what to do? And I'm like, do I? I'm a sorcerer. I love magic shit. And, um, yeah, um, she told me to go talk to all her minions, and I talked to her minions, and then uh, I was told to go kill General Rodan, because General Rodan's whole deal is that he is the uh, the Star Scourge, who, through sheer force of will, is holding back the stars from the night sky, because the stars... While they are also necessary for sorcery and astrology, are physical, literal, actual um, things, uh, entities, creatures, entities from the sky, which, oh, creepy, which fall and collapse from heaven and are huge, horrible monsters when they land on the earth and have to be fought. So Radan was holding them all back in the sky, but uh, the witch, Rani, has decided that that's probably more of a problem than it's worth, and actually she would like the stars to be back in the sky, maybe, please, including the moon. Since her mother, the demigod of the moon, is in fact the moon, and would very much like the moon back. Although I have actually kicked the shit out of her mother and stolen her great rune, so I don't know if she still counts. Also, I have no idea if Alice is watching this. Um, <laughs> I hope she is, but if she's not, I'll send her a clip of that later. So... I don't really know anything about Nokron, the Eternal City, yet. I've been putting together bits of information and history about the various surface world locations and what their deal is and figuring it all out, but um, as far as I know, Nokron is supposedly more ancient than anything else and is this mysterious underground city. There was an attempt to explore it by a group of slave scholars and uh, the various corpses we find all over the place, which are noticeably the same model as the um, wandering sorcerers that you find in the game world are presumably just all over the place. 
Yeah, Rani is also barefoot. Miyazaki loves to have barefoot women in his games, in his games. But uh, Rani, Rani looks very childlike to me, which is why I find it uncomfortable that everyone's written like waifu ahead or whatever all over the place. Are we? Oh no, we're not cool. So yeah, I don't know what the deal is with Nokron yet, beyond that it's a more sort of ancient and primordial place, possibly a kind of Atlantis, a, a lost golden age type citadel location far underground. I found a diff few different glances of it bit by bit. Where the hell did all these guys come from? While exploring. Specifically this area, Siofra River, which ha is a river with loads of ruined masonry and a secret dragon boss that you can find up here. And um, it's really beautiful down here. It's actually one of the most beautiful locations in the entire game. Or at least so for river is. There's also the uh, Ainsel River over here, or Ansel River, which is a giant ant's nest, but occasionally has little glimpses of big fancy architecture. There's definitely some kind of additional secret underground location over here because I caught glimpses of it through cracks in the wall and I could see what looked definitely like large explorable areas over there. So I'm really hoping to find out what the deal with that is eventually. But um, yeah, so the mysterious underground city of Nokron has some some connection, possibly, to the cult of um, ancestral followers who are a bunch of Viking-looking dudes who believe that the, um, the horns budding from their bodies are a sort of a sign of primordial return to nature, and they hope that they will eventually become ancestor spirits. You can find real live alive ones in the overworld, and down here in the underworld you can find ghosts of them, so presumably they were at least partially right. And, you know, have actually become, in some way, ancestor spirits. Also, I did kill their god. Like, mea culpa, I'm sorry guys, I didn't really think about what I was doing. I did kill your god. But I'm not actually sure what they, what connections they have to anything else. What's this guy got? Ooh, that could be useful. Yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure what defines god, demigod, and so on. I don't know if there's a kind of like an idea about what is and is not a god. Some settings have very clear ideas about what are and are not deities or demons and so on, and how they interact with each other and what things mean. All I know is that the various different god entities that are dotted around the world are called demigods, and each of those has a, a rune of some kind for me to take, which I've just remembered I should probably go actually unlock the, the rune power for the rune I got from Radan earlier. But, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so there are various, there are a handful of mentions of other gods with the, you know, the god terminology, but the only one who seems to have any kind of actual physical presence in the world is Marika. Um, all of the others I've only heard about via item descriptions. Oh, hang on a second. These guys have the, okay, I have that shield in my inventory. Let's have a look, see. See, this is this is the soul's influence, putting putting little bits of information together and figuring out your own interpretations. That's the fun thing. The inverted hawk is the emblem of the company of slaves ordered to explore the Eternal City. So the sorcerer corpses I've been seeing all over the place, I'm assuming was was that core of slaves, but that's clearly these guys are as well, or possibly only these guys are. So I'm going to assume that whatever warriors they had with them have de devolved, degenerated or whatever into these white corpse thingies and uh, the sorcerers themselves are dead. Also, un I hear a- th oh, ah, I missed one. So they were probably the bodyguards of all the sorcerers that are dead or not dead all over the place. We've also got this um, interesting statue iconography up there. I don't know if that's a statue or if that's literally preserved corpses in some way. But I do know that clay men live down here, and there is a, a precedent in this setting for material just sort of coming alive and being alive in and of its own right. So I don't know if the clay men are just a kind of a thing that happens, elementally speaking, or if they are, you know, the last vestiges of the the people who inhabited this place long ago.
I assume that I will find out eventually. I feel like I'm missing something here. So the, um, yeah, but uh, the ways that Nokron interacts with the overall cosmology, because there is implicitly a time in this world before the Elden Ring existed, and a time before the Erd Tree existed. But those two have an, inter an interrelation, which I don't think I really uncovered yet. Um, and those have themselves an interrelation with the Crucible, which is the other deeper origin of all life beyond those, I suppose. What I am wondering is if this is a kind of a soulsy thing where there have been a, success a successive series of attempts to sort of restore the world as it collapse <laughs> collapses. Um, so we have the, the remnants of a succession of sort of linchpins holding the world together. But I don't have really any direct evidence for that yet, beyond the fact that the, the Elden Ring itself was definitely one of those because it shattered and now... Uh, well, nobody can die anymore, and everybody's gone completely insane. Uh, the Crucible Knights, I found the first one I fought to be really difficult and tedious. Later on, I fought one that I managed to beat relatively easily. So, I, uh, it depends on when I run into them and how strong I'm feeling. The first one I fought, and the one I got really stuck on, that was before I had figured out the dodge timings for this game. It should not have taken me 60 hours to start to figure out what this game wants from me dodge-wise, but I have started to figure that out now. I say failing to dodge. But, um, yeah, especially for big creatures, Elden Ring has really, really late, um, like, dodge timings in its animation. There's a huge wind-up, and then usually a false start, especially on big monsters, which makes it really difficult to dodge properly. Also, let me know if I lose connection. Let me know if the stream quality is terrible or whatever, because uh, my internet has been less than ideal today. Anyway, in addition to uh, knowing that there is some capacity of, of inert matter to develop life on its own, there's also the fact that we know sorcerers can create life because the Albinorix are a created life form constructed by... Ah, Sofra River is down there. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, like I figured out how to beat them now. It's just a it's just a matter of patience. It's like an endurance fight. You just gotta uh, get the dodge timings down and then uh, successfully just you know get the fuckers. <laughs> Wait for your moment. That's the real trick. It's nice to see new animations for slimes, though. These are the first new slime animations I've seen. Oh, well, the dodge timings are just straight up different in this than they are in Dark Souls. Um, like, it took me a really long time to unlearn my Dark Souls dodging instinct, and it's literally just that a lot of the creatures have uh, longer wind-ups, false starts, and also, like, faster attack times. So, you know, the point at which I would normally be dodging in a Dark Souls animation is the point at which their arm stops moving backwards because it's about to spring forwards. But very often in Elden Ring, they, they pull their arm back, then pause for a second or two, and then swing their arm forwards. Or pause, then do a half motion, or, or like a feint, and then swing the arm forwards. So it's just really been a matter of training myself to wait until I think they're going to hit me, basically. <laughs> There's also a lot more huge AoEs, so it's a lot more important to um, focus on dodging forwards into an attack rather than dodging backwards out of an attack radius, because generally speaking, even with the longest dodge roll, you won't move far enough to, to be out of the hit radius, even if you move far enough, uh, even if you get the iframes co uh, correct. All right, uh, I have no idea what's on the other side of this, this boss door, so prepare for me to get my ass kicked. That said, I have first tried something like two-thirds of the bosses in this game, at least. However, those were early game, like... 
All of the sorts of the game's core bosses, I, I've, I first tried up until Radan. Oh, I don't like that. Are we cool? Can we just... Oh, okay, we're doing this. There's a real flaw to their plan, which is that I am terrible. Why would you turn into me? Also, why did that arrow go through my guy? All hail the demi-human mob. Absolutely my favourite summon in the game so far. Oh, this is the Mimic tier. Ah! I've heard of this. Is it gonna- oh, that's it? That's all it is? Okay. <laughs> Get wrecked, I guess. Hey James, you're staying with me. No, James! What a tragedy. Well, that was almost an interesting boss fight. I actually I have a lot of criticisms of the ways that this game has adapted the Souls formula to an open world format, and probably first and foremost amongst them is the fact that very few of the bosses are kind of like the delightful spectacle that you get in, in Dark Souls, which... When you find a boss in Dark Souls, it's almost the reward for the gruelling stuff you've gone through, and now you get to have a thrilling... You know, a thrilling battle with a powerful enemy that you can slowly learn and master. Whereas in this, I have only run into like three or four bosses that required multiple attempts, but that weren't insta-killing me. Generally speaking, I just beat them on the first try and feel disappointed. And then... Um, in addition to that, there are, of course... Oh, hey, can I? No, no, no horse for me today. What, which bosses did I have a really easy time with? Uh, almost all of them for, like, the first 20 hours. Uh, I first tried Margit. I first tried Godwin. I f or Godric, rather. Uh, I first tried... I didn't first try Renala, but Renala only took, like, three tries, I think. Um, like, as soon as I'd figured out what I needed to do, I beat her on the next attempt. Um... Yeah, Margate was easy. Oh, the bosses that were difficult for me, um, mostly open world bosses so far. I had a lot of trouble with... Actually, no, no I didn't first try Margate. I think it took two, maybe three tries to beat Margate. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking up my own legend completely unjustifiably. Uh, I think it was the second try I beat Margate on. But yeah, so I've been kind of surprised by seeing everybody complaining online about how difficult Margit is, because it's just kind of like, no, it wasn't really. I think what happened was I got him to phase two on my first attempt, and then he one-shotted me with the hammer because I wasn't expecting it, and then uh, on my next attempt I had a jellyfish hold aggro for a, a bunch of the fight and just wailed on him until he died. Huh, really? Strange. Well, maybe I'm just incredibly good at video games, you never know. The irony of me saying that as I just re repeatedly got absolutely smashed earlier on my quiet, no commentary stream. Oh yeah, summons definitely help. I feel like, um, I feel like there's, a, there's a kind of a specific reason the summons are in this game, honestly, and it is to mitigate for the fact that it being open world means you're a lot less likely to have a specific new player. Uh, present. See, Radan was frustrating because I kept consistent, consistently getting him down to about like five more hits to kill him uh, and then dying. But that was yesterday when I was fighting him by myself. Oh no! My treasure! Aw, oh, beans. Oh, I got it anyway. Fantastic. So yeah, when I, when I was um, fighting Radan by, my, by myself... Uh, not on stream. I was I was consistently getting him almost to death and then getting hit by a one-shot attack and dying. And then um, on stream earlier today, I, I would get him down to like half health or something or 25% health and then die. So I summoned another player and then as soon as I summoned another player, that was it. He just went down easy.
But the most uh, the bosses I've had real trouble with have been open world bosses mostly. It took me a while to get the hang of the magma drakes, but now they're just kind of tedious. The the root knots as well were a bit troublesome. But um, for the most part, they haven't been difficult. I think the only the only ones that I've run into that are really actually outright completely bullshit and I think are genuinely just badly designed are the three rot infected crystallians and the uh, the star fallen beasts, which I just find such a pain in the ass to fight. I can't be bothered. Anyway, so down there is Siofra River, which is a whole zone I enjoyed exploring many hours ago, probably about 40, 50 hours ago I explore, explored down there, which was really fun and it was really cool, despite the fact that there's a whole section in the middle which is just badly designed, which is kind of a callback to the uh, Anor Londo archers, but which broke why the Anor Londo archers encounter worked. Which actually is kind of a microcosm of most of my problems with this game. There are a lot of things from Dark Souls which are adapted into this game, but are, they have not adapted them to account for the ways that uh, it being open world changes the way the game works. Dark Souls bosses are wonderful and majestic, and then they're done and you go away and you don't fight them again. If you have to fight the same one five times, there's definitely bosses I have fought like six or seven times as I've explored the world, they just become boring and unpleasant and you don't really want to do it again. It's just like, oh, this one's too easy. I don't I don't think that's going to be fun to fight again. Oh, these ones were, weren't difficult, but they were a pain in the ass because they took forever, etc. Generally speaking, any... Uh, oh, and also, there's just a lot less of a margin for error a lot of the time. I complained about this last stream. <laughs> See, but this, but then, like, for all that I complain about this game, it shows me something like this, and I'm just like, that's gorgeous, that's absolutely beautiful. It was really delightful when I came down the Siofra Rift lift previously over there and caught glimpses of this through the ruined city. Just absolutely lovely. What's up, my guy? Lord of Blood, your eminence. I beg you, grant me a seat at the table of the dynasty. Long live the Mogwin dynasty. This guy's dressed like uh, the nobles of um, Godric the Grafted's house. All the peasants or whatever they were. I wonder what Lord of Blood means. There's definitely been mentions of a Lord of Blood a few times, but that doesn't seem to be connected to the, the people who use blood magic, of whom there have been several, and they've killed most of them relatively easy. Oh, I can drop down there, but do I want to drop down there? I see a guy. Oh, that's a bird. <laughs> if I drop down there, I can probably teleport back up to the mimic tier. So let's find out. Let's see if we can find something cool down here. Apologies to the many people who watch my channel but, but can't stand violence to birds. I need their feathers. I need them for arrow reasons. There's actually a really good farming spot for for feathers, but that's a ways back. Oh, this leads okay, this leads down to an area I read I already explored from the other end by coming up from Siofra. Oh. <laughs> Nearly died. Yeah, there's these occasional glimpses of the sort of like really lovely well-designed, well-directed areas, um, but they happen sort of in the abstract and disconnected from one another, rather than the extremely highly authored way that you get in the Dark Souls games, simply because it's an open world game. I think that making an open world game has genuinely just been detrimental to what this game could have been, really. I don't think making it open world helps in any of the places that they've made it. Like, all of the ways it changes the design, I think, are ultimately detrimental to the Souls formula. And what I was saying yesterday was simply that um, I'm normally in favour of studios changing up what they do and innovating and doing new things. But the thing is, FromSoft are the only studio that really make good Souls games. And so if I want good Souls games, I have to come to them for it. 
So them uh, changing that is frustrating, but also I would be in favor of them changing it if it was something new and innovative, but instead what they have done is simply jam open world stuff into the formula without really altering the formula to account for the open world stuff, which is, as I've said, ultimately detrimental to the thing. They simply don't gel very well. And in fact, my favorite, absolutely favorite part of this, of this game have been where it has stopped being open world. When I first went through um, Stormvale Castle, suddenly it felt like I was playing the games that I like again. And it was an absolute joy to explore that place. Until I got out again at the other side and then I was like, oh, okay, back to this, I guess. But that said, I... I did explore this game early on in a way that I think it is not meant to be explored. For my first like 40 hours or so, I was absolutely rinsing every single part of the game because that's what the previous Souls games taught me to do. Um, and, you know, same in Sekiro and so on. All the previous FromSoft games I've played have had this kind of encouragement in their design to explore every single tiny part of them and get every single piece of information that you can find. Anyway, I fought a giant, like, dragon kin over there, so that was cool. That said, there's lots of individual bits of this game I really like, and there's also lots of ideas in this game that I really like. There is a kind of a filter that you get in fantasy games of what is and is not too silly. Or fantasy settings in, gen in general. Oh, that was close. Uh, yeah, of what is, is and is not too silly, but... Um, Yeah, you see, that's because they're people who are coming to this from liking open world games. But uh, yeah, what I was trying to say but didn't quite finish saying was simply that open world design is massively overrepresented in the games industry at the moment. It is the current like buzzword. Um, it is the current thing that the marketing guys will say, this is what sells, this is what people like, this is what people want. This happens roughly every five years in game in the game industry. They just pick a new thing. Um, you know, in 2006, it was brown, muddy shooters and third person shooters specifically. And then every game on the market was suddenly had to be a third person shooter. But, um, Souls was something unique and special and FromSoft's design, uh, like goals was something pretty unique and special that only really they did and that nobody else does. So it feels a lot more cynical uh, to change the design in this way for that purpose rather than to changing the design in a way that might actually improve it and make something newer and interesting -er. That said, I kind of can't stand open world design in general. I find them addicting, eh, but ultimately not fun. I don't think this game does a... wow. My horse! Did he die? What, what, what killed him, though? He, he really hated my horse, I guess. I'm genuinely not sure what did the last hit on him. But yeah, there are um, various parts of the game world that you can't really go to. As you, as you, you know, start to explore in the overworld and you go from Limgrave, you can pretty reasonably start exploring in the peninsula or head up to uh, Laernia. But if you go to Kaelid, you'll get your shit kicked in and it sucks and it's a bad place to explore and it feels horrible. So yeah, uh, don't go to Kaelid unless you can, uh, unless you can't help it at all. So previously I found eight of these uh, monoliths, or obelisks rather, which lit up a temple down... So down there there are eight obelisks once you light them all... Ow, motherfucker! Speaking of lighting things up, I'm gonna light this motherfucker up. Hey, I know this is a fantasy game, but I have brought my favourite item from another game. Try my magic rail gun. I think my bow does more damage than him. Oh shit, he didn't die. Fortunately, I have a bow bow as well. <laughs> it's 
fun to be doing noticeably more damage to these than I used to when I was here previously. Well, that's him told. I don't remember what the fuck I was talking about, but uh, yeah, so... There's a, there's a lot of the game world that you can explore without it being really a problem early on. But it's funny that you mentioned New Vegas because I've actually... Uh, oh, hi. Um, okay. These guys can't see me, right? I bet they can see me. He can definitely see me. Okay, well I didn't kill him that time. I so often bop people with my magic staff by accident. This is one of the like downsides of being a wizard. I'll probably be quiet whenever I'm focusing on not dying, so... Oops, that was a waste. Now those guys can't see me. I'm definitely stealthed. You can't see me. You can't see me. Please don't notice me. What a terrible surprise. It's so much fun to come back and fight something that troubled you early game once you've spent 80 hours leveling up, isn't it? Anyway, I've already forgotten what the hell I was talking about, so... I'm curious to see what's up here, because the last time I lit up one of these temples and went inside, I murdered their god, so presumably there's another fight with their god. Because all of the boss fights in this game are repeated, apart from the, the major... Like, the eight proper special ones. Uh, wow, okay. This guy's go Oh my god, he killed me! That won't do at all. That's frustrating because that one had golden eyes. Whenever you see an enemy with golden eyes, it means that they have been randomly selected to drop something like five times as many uh, runes upon death, so... Generally a good idea to kill the shit out of them when you see them. Whoops. Actually, I don't need, don't need you right now, Torrent. You can fuck right off. Okay, let's try this again. Where's my magic booster? There it is. Please don't target the sheep. Please target the large man walking towards you. There we go. Yeah, actually, the Ancestor Beast fight was really lovely. Uh, both the creature itself was very beautiful, and also... Oh shit, is that one of the... What's he up to? So some of these guys have longbows, and they do do insane damage. They are basically the parasol archers from Anor Londo, except that... Um, at the very least, back down in the lower area of Siofra River, when I was doing it ages and ages and ages ago... What I found was that they can target you from literally so far away that you can't see them. And they are completely covered by foliage as well, which means that they're basically impossible to fight against. And in addition, rather than having one very careful sight line, the way that the Anor Londo archers do, which then allows you to plot your path and solve that problem and figure out how to deal with it and how it works, instead of that, they can and will shoot at you from pretty much any angle. And it's just a really nasty design puzzle. Dark Souls was always fair. Dark Souls was often difficult, but it was always fair. Um, but frequently I have found that Elden Ring is just outright actually unfair, and I think that's a huge shame. fuckers are there? I think I can count five? Not counting the ones I've already murdered? 
Well, actually, it's not murder. Let's be honest. This is self-defense. They are they they are big threatening guys. The fact that I've wandered into their home doesn't make it not self-defense, right? Like, does the castle doctrine apply in uh, an underground eternal city with a beautiful false night sky? I don't know. Do you? I'm not a lawyer. God, they keep coming. There's still two of them left. This is, incidentally, my favourite spell in the game. In case you couldn't tell. I'm actually thinking of kind of going full sword. I still- I love having the, um... You know, the box of tricks. I love having all of these spells that can deal with specific problems that I don't want to deal with. Um, so I don't think I would respec out of being a wizard at all. Uh, 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 let's let's pretend I'm not a, co a colonialist right now. I'm not sure my heart could take it. Plus, I'm pretty sure these guys aren't native to Nokron either. The, the Nox are the people who are actually from Nokron. These guys are just these guys are just down here because they think it will lead to their chosen pro prophesied land or whatever. So, you know, really these guys aren't doing anything I'm not doing or I'm not doing anything these guys aren't doing. So, it's fine, you know. Also, these guys stagger really really easily. Um, you may or may not have noticed that at a certain point in a fight they often put an arm up. When they're doing that, they're blocking with their arm. At that point, they will stop staggering. However, uh, if you want to fight them real easy, you can keep them staggered um, up until that point. So just a little pro tip for you there. But yeah, so as much as I find it endearing that this game reminds me of really, really old school d and I'm talking like 1970s Dungeons and Dragons, you know, uh, the era of the uh, Tomb of Annihilation and so on. I do think that it is a worse video game than Dark Souls 3. And I'm not really sure why it is getting across the board um, 10 out of 10s. It's it's honestly kind of strange to me. Um, presumably it's people who love open world games coming to, coming to it, or people who haven't played a Souls type thing before and going like, wow, this is great, actually. Um, but yeah. For me, it's just a little bit disappointing. I think my biggest criticism... Hmm, is that... Is that what's singing? Because I've heard singing things in the game world before, and it's always been a harpy. I suppose one way to find out would be to shoot her and see if she stops singing. Anyway, what the fuck was I talking about? Um, oh yeah, like I think my biggest criticism of this game is just that I'm not finding myself doing the thing that I have done in every single other FromSoft game of devouring every scrap of information and seeing how it fits into an enormous, complicated web of information. Fitting it all together in my mind and figuring out not necessarily the truth, but my truth, my suspicions about what's happened. My... Motherfucker. My prediction of what this future holds, you know? What this world holds, what its deal is, how it works. Um, instead, it's kind of just felt like a whole bunch of different stuff. Like, I'm learning about individual things, but I'm not really learning about how they interrelate to one another. And part of that is because the nature of the open world means that there's little bits of everybody everywhere. When you play a Dark Souls game, you find yourself thinking, everything in this zone is clearly made by these people, right? It's it's their culture, it's their designs, it's their stuff. So why is that one individual from that other group of people here? You know, why is it why is that so out of place? It's so strange. And then you sort of put things together in your mind and read item descriptions and you you figure out this elaborate, complicated web of how these different places interrelate. And that works because they are, for the most part, are separate places. They, for the most part, are relatively self-contained. 
Ooh, that was close. I don't want to learn, lose 30,000 souls. Mind you, the time I lost 90,000 souls at the point where that was worth more than three level ups, that was pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, you say I haven't read enough, but I have played... I mean, I've learned a lot about individual things, but I don't feel like they stitch together interestingly yet. Um... Like narratively, there is there is there is beginning to be a sort of a, a stitching together of understanding in my brain, but that doesn't fit onto the world. It feels like two separate layers. It feels like there's the stuff in the world and there's the stuff in the law, um, and I'm kind of putting them together separately. And um, yeah, when you play a, a Dark Souls game, I find myself thinking that you know every well every single different location in a Souls game is very carefully crafted very carefully put together to show you specific things and tell you specific things. And um, the information that you learn is very intrinsically tied to that. Whereas in the open world thing, there's little bits of everything everywhere. Um, and very quickly you start seeing the trees for the wood, you know? And that kind of breaks the formula and sucks a bit. I mean, I personally think it's a great game. I just don't think it's as good a game as um, the, some of the Souls games, simply because I think it's a lot less finely tuned. Um, I'm kind of completely rambling here. I don't know. I have some clear thoughts, but I haven't expressed myself well on stream lately, partly because I still have a lot of jaw pain. But yeah, in terms of how much I've read, I have, you know, I've played for 80 hours and I've collected every item in the game and I've read every item description that I've found so far. I've got so much stuff. I've got so much stuff and I've read all of it and I've put bits together about all sorts of different things. And the, you know, insofar as that's concerned, it's, you know, pretty classic Soulsy stuff. The issue is stitching that into the game world. It feels like two completely separate layers of um, exploration. Oopsie whoopsie. Is she gonna hit me with that rock? Oh, it's an animal skull. I should have realized. Why the hell did I die? Can I ride that? No, okay. What game was I playing recently where I discovered you could ride deer? Oh, it was the last open world game I played, uh, Breath of the Wild. <laughs> Fun fact, you can ride deer in Breath of the Wild if you sneak up on them. A lot of people don't realise that. The deer do not like it. But it is very funny. But yeah, something can be worse than Dark Souls 3 and still be a really good game, just to be clear. Aha! Oh, well, I haven't played the earlier Nier games, but um, Nier Automata, I have heavy, heavy, heavy criticisms of. Um, I, I don't really think that it deserves the praise it gets. Uh, I thought it was really weak thematically. Um, it kind of, it, I felt, I feel like it was, you know that, uh, that saying people have about, um, something being like a dog talking it's not the fact that the dog speaks well but the fact that it speaks at all that's surprising i think that game got the reception it did simply because it was a game that was willing to have themes uh and a game that was willing to do various you know kind of like storytelling tricks that games don't generally do very often but i don't think it necessarily used any of those techniques well it was the, simply the fact that they were present at all uh that people were, were responding to which, of course, like, sure, that puts it ahead of the vast majority of games, but I think we should, like, judge art as art overall and not give it the out of, well, it's amazing for a game, you know?
And like I say that as someone who did complete all of the like I completed Automata and then went through all of the different bonus other endings. I think I think I manually saw endings like A, B, C, D, E. Is there an F? <laughs> A lot of endings in that game. Um, but I thought that ultimately its its themes were weak and the way it executes on its themes were weak. And I'm just repeating myself now, but then I do that a lot. Because whenever I'm streaming, I cannot shut the fuck up. Which is usually why I only stream a couple times a week, because otherwise I get a sore throat. I should probably start doing like vocal warm ups or something, but uh, whatever. Now there's like six more of these guys ahead for me to slaughter. I mean, preemptively self defend myself against. So I need to be fairly careful. Anyway, these guys are one of the less uh, less important, I guess, factions in the game so far. These are the... I think they're called followers. Um, the ancestral followers, specifically. And their whole deal is that they worship ancestor spirits and have a sort of a return to nature sort of thing. The first ones I encountered were ghostly, and down in Siofra River there are ghostly versions of these guys. So... Implicitly, the fact that these ones have, like, shiny ghostly horns means that they're, like, less advanced on their mystical path, let's say. And the implication is, of course, that um, the ones in the surface world are seeking to end up down here one day so that they can return to their sort of, like, blessed um, pre-civilization... God, what's the word? There's a, there's a term for a sort of a, a Garden of Eden kind of a pre-civilization hunter-gatherer you know, a uh, blessed afterlife. Anyway, so their item descriptions basically say that uh, they consider the horns budding in their bodies to be uh, a sign of, of blessing and that it means that they're growing closer to their sort of ancestral kin and that one day they will become ancestor spirits. Which presumably means that, you know, they're trying to work their way down here and that the ones, the ghost ones I killed, I think I just murdered their spirits. Well... There are physical... Well, I think the, the ghost ones are still down there. I killed their god and the ghost ones didn't go away. So I think that puts uh, that I think that puts that puts theory to bed. But I do like the idea of there being a specific um, kind of group of people in this world who, instead of seeing uh, the sprouting of horns as a, a, a marker of sin, as, a, as a, a terrible thing, as a curse or whatever, which the people on the, most of the people on the surface seem to, um, because there are various different important capitalized nouns and, uh, people who are afflicted with the omen begin to sprout horns from their bodies. I think Margit was, was very heavily afflicted with the omen. Is that a crucible note? Ooh, that was close. But yeah, see, this, this is exactly the same puzzle. Actually... If I can, if I can be permitted to be a downer for like a few more minutes before I go back to talking happily about stuff and not being a downer, um, the uniqueness of everything you see on your way through a Souls game. There is a unique area with unique stuff in, and then you get to the end of that, and there is a unique boss. There are very few repeated bosses, and I think that um, open world games. One of the reasons I I don't like them on average is that they are repeated content, repeated content, repeated content, and it stops. It doesn't feel like a world to me. It feels like a, a list of things to do. It feels like here is gameplay activity A. Here is gameplay activity B. You know, um, here's a hunting challenge. Here's a platforming challenge. Here's a whatever. You know. Actually, I wonder where this goes. I should. I'm going to clear out the rest of these guys first, and then come back and look at this. So I'm just going to drop a marker so I remember that. Well, I missed, but whatever. So yeah, um, and so just, I fought so many bosses this multiple times. It is only the main storyline bosses who are not repeated a bunch of times so far, and that's really disappointing to me. I just, you know, the first time I fought the ancestral boss, it was like, wow, what a beautiful, strange thing to encounter. How unusual and lovely. Um, and here I am setting up to go kill at least one more of them. And that's just flat out disappointing for the reasons I've already described. You know, after you've fought three magma drakes, the fourth one is just a chore. I think the 
guessing I might be buffing them. Oh, I put my glintstone sword away, that's a shame. There we go. <laughs> Luckily my sword has glintstone, uh, glintstone greatsword. Actually it's Karian Splendor, which is the upgrade. Always equipped. But yeah, so one of my fears with um, Elden Ring was that it would just be the same as every other what I call map clearing games, because what you do is you get shown a map with a ton of icons on it and then you spend the entire rest of the game walking from icon to icon, tidying it up. And what I found at first was that that fear was not founded. And after 20 hours, I realized that that was exactly what had happened. It's just that all of the different activities were somewhat weirder than one normally finds in that kind of game. Um, and that's a huge shame. Because the first time you find a wizard's tower that, that has the riddle, find three wise beasts to enter, you're like, wow, that's cool, that's really interesting. The third time you find that specific puzzle in that specific uh, wording, in that specific format, that is no longer entertaining. Now that is a chore and it is no longer a surprise and it is no longer delightful. Um, and so it's kind of... Open world games are so completely antithetical to what Dark Souls games were. And I know this isn't a Dark Souls game, but it's made by the studio that made the thing I love. So um, I, th I don't think you can try and put those in the same game and expect and expect them to do anything other than just fight each other. Um, I think that it weakens both things. Or, well, maybe it elevates an open world game, but it, it doesn't elevate a Dark Souls game. Hi, Meland. So yeah, that's one of my opinions on this game, Elden Ring. I feel like if I had just like 30 hours in, oh shit, it's one of these things. 30 hours in, I had recorded and released a video like Elden Ring backlash. It's not as good as people think it is. I would have made all of the YouTube dollars in the world. Like I don't actively court controversy, but and, you know, I've played this for 80 hours, I'm probably going to finish the damn thing, but still. It's just... just kind of disappointing. I don't want to fight this. I hate fighting these. Like, really rapid-moving bosses are the ones I can't stand in this game. Uh... So, I can't actually read what anyone's saying until I have either killed or escaped from this giant red fox. The problem with these bosses is that they move so fast I kind of have to fight them on horseback, but uh, you can't dodge roll on horseback, which means that my like escaping from damage instincts are all fucked up. So I'm probably going to be focusing while I fight it. Ah, I got far enough away. Dark Souls 3 was definitely more accessible than uh, the previous games, but this is far, far more accessible, I think. Um, I think if I was coming to this fresh, never having played a Soul uh, a from soft game before, I would have probably had a similar experience to my first play of Dark Souls with regards to the difficulty of actually like playing it, but I would have adapted a lot faster. Uh, because it is easier. Like, it is objectively easier than, than Dark Souls. I say getting knocked the fuck off my horse by a giant dog that then killed me. Actually, one thing I do think is strange is that this is supposedly the most accessible um, FromSoft game that they've ever made. However, when it has a difficulty spike, it spikes really hard. As I've said, most of the bosses have either been too easy. There's only three or four bosses that haven't been too easy for me. Um, 
Uh, but then when it when it chooses to be difficult, it is a really tedious kind of difficult. Like in FromSoft games, I genuinely relish the challenge. I enjoy trying over and over and over again on something I'm stuck on. You know, there are bosses I've played, I've fought 50 times before I beat them. And um, the th that's simply because it always has a bit of a margin for error. They're never quite unfair. There's always some capacity to um, to learn from your mistakes and keep going. Whereas in Elden Ring, the sheer abundance of things that are either too easy or that literally kill you in one hit and you're dead and that's it, means that I don't, you don't really get the opportunity to learn and grow in the same way. Another recurring motif from the Souls games, incidentally, the uh, pillars of the earth holding up the world. Which in Dark Souls was the arc trees of, you know, the the foundations of a previous existence upon which the modern world was built. Whereas here we have, I guess they're just the stone pillars that hold up the earth uh, above this knocker on the Eternal City. Are they going to be cool or are they going to attack me? I bet they're going to attack me. Are we cool or are you going to attack me? Asked and answered. I actually don't like the horse combat very much. I like being able to dodge roll. <laughs> you miss iframes when you're on a horse. You can't... Uh... Well, I miss iframes when I'm on a horse. Not in the sense of not landing them right, but in the sense of them not existing. Although, that said, when jumping onto or off your horse, you do actually get iframes during that animation, which is fun. But yeah, there's a lot more bosses in this game that will kill you in one hit and at any time, which means, of course, that over the course of a 20-minute fight with a boss, you have to dodge roll perfectly every single time. There is zero margin for error. You have to execute it perfectly. And that's not fun to me. There's no there's no capacity to improve. Which is not to say that, like, Souls is, you know, easy with regards to that, you know, but something will knock you down to you have five hit points left and then you have just a chance to heal yourself, provided you dodge the next couple attacks. Well, that might be true, but, you know, every other FromSoft game I've ever played has taught me to explore everything. Because those games are ultimately about questioning everything. Those games are about the world being a place where people will lie to you and provide you with the wrong information, and where you need to explore and figure things out for yourself. It's literally a major component of um, Miyazaki's design intentions, uh, according to him, specific him himself, uh, for the, the goals of Yeah, I mean, there are, hmm, like, I would not object to Dark Souls having some kind of adaptive difficulty system, because I think that Dark Souls should be exactly as difficult as it is for me, for everyone. So for someone who has a much harder time playing video games, it should be the right level of difficulty for them, that it is a challenge they can overcome, you know what I mean? Because one of the things I have, that has been said to beat me by multiple people whenever I'm talking about whether or not this game is too easy and Dark Souls games and challenge and challenge and games and all this stuff is, well, you're really good at video games. And I mean, I don't think I'm that good, really. I think I'm quite good. <laughs> I think I'm acceptable. Um, but I'm not one of those people who says, well, the difficulty is inherent to the experience and to the themes of the game. Uh, well, no, I am one of those people because the difficulty is inherent to the experience and the themes. However, it should be the right level of difficulty for everyone. And what's difficult for me is is or what's not difficult for me is isn't necessarily not difficult for someone else, etc. Oh yeah, the um, the bell demon, I think it was called. Yeah, no, that's a nice touch. If you're having too much of an easy time with Sekiro, which I was not, <laughs> I loved Sekiro and I did beat it in a few days the second time I came back to it. Or no, the third time I played it. Um, but uh, it was kind of a thing. What the hell was I saying? My mind's gone completely blank. Uh, 
This thing doesn't have a boss bar, but it uh, I don't think they respawn after you kill them. There are, there are a few creatures in the game that don't have boss bars, but which also don't respawn when you kill them. Well, yeah, that's kind of partly what I mean. I feel like uh, someone who's not got the reaction times to play a game like Dark Souls should still be able to experience Dark Souls. It's just that the reaction time should be tuned to that should be tunable so that it can be made appropriate to the level of someone who can't otherwise play it. Because um, you know that game being like made so easy that I don't have trouble with any of the bosses in it might still be the same level of difficulty to someone else that the the, the game normally is to me, which is a there's got to be a better way to phrase what I'm trying to say, but that'll do for now. Let's not fall in the water. No, bad dog. Terrible dog. Whoever said there are no bad dogs hasn't met these goddamn things. Actually, From Software very consistently have a history of the worst dogs in video games. Dogs are bad enemies in all video games that feature them. There's actually pretty reasonable uh, kind of fundamental explanations for why dogs are usually bad enemies in video games. And the most basic one is that um, they're a lot faster than you expect and also they have um, they have very low hitboxes in whatever game they're in. Generally, you know, if you're playing an FPS, if you're playing an action game, whatever, you're used to things coming at you at certain angles and certain heights and being hittable or dodgeable based on that. Whereas... Um, Dogs in whatever game they're in will always have the fastest, lowest hitbox. Grab my bloodstain. Uh, so there's probably, there's got to be a few more of these obelisks around that I need to find before I can go kill their god again, I guess. Which is starting to become kind of a habit and maybe I should worry about that. Uh, the fox is easier to dodge his attacks on foot, but he moves so fast that um, if you fight him on foot, he just kind of is out of your out of your reach all of the time. Uh, unless you're using long ranged attacks, but the problem is my bow is the only sorcery I have that's long enough ranged to hit him when as he jumps around like a lunatic, which means that I oh hi. Which means that I uh, can't uh, fight him because he'll just hit me while I'm in the animation, which will cancel it because the bow does not have the poise to do that because it's not a weapon art. I relied on a, a summoned minion the last time I fought it, but uh, I'm not within a minion summoning zone. I do really like the minion summoning mechanic in this game. I, it's a really fun addition, and I am really loving collecting all of my Dark Souls Pokemon. I've got like 40 of the damn things now. But... Um, I think it's... <laughs> I think it may actually have been added to the game solely to mitigate for one of the things about Dark Souls that this being an open world game breaks. Namely, you often need to summon help and because this is so huge and because all of the bosses are repeated six or seven times each the boss density is like a hundred times what it is in a Dark Souls game or I guess seven times what it is in a Dark Souls game which means that wherever you are there is no guarantee that any other players are exploring that area. The fanged imps are wonderful and they are my second favorite. Um, so yeah, because you will not be able to summon consistently summon assistance the way you can expect to in a Dark Souls game, although of course nobody plays Dark Souls 1 anymore, so if you are still playing the Prepare to Die edition, you can't summon other players anyway, simply because nobody's playing it anymore. But um, generally speaking, you are assumed to be able to summon assistance for any problem you encounter in the game, and that actually fits very beautifully into the themes of Dark Souls. Uh, in a way I waxed lyrical about in my most recent um, playthrough stream of Dark Souls 1, where I was playing through Dark Souls Remastered. At one point, I um, went on this whole thing about how actually one of the major themes of Dark Souls is that it doesn't matter how hard it is, it doesn't matter how terrible 
the experience you're having is, there's someone out there who can help you. you. If you can just find them, someone will be able to help you. You're not alone. You're never alone. Even if you can't find someone to help you with the specific challenge you're having, you're still seeing the messages left by other people. You're still seeing the ghosts of other players. You know that we are in, in this all together, even if you can't find someone to help you with your specific current challenge that is that you're struggling with. And I think that's a really lovely sentiment. And I think that that is a really beautiful thing to reinforce with the difficulty of the Dark Souls games. It's so challenging. And when you summon someone else to help you, it gets more challenging. The bosses, <clears throat> the bosses gain double hit points. Oh shit. Uh, whenever you summon in someone to help you. And, and yeah, having someone around still makes it so much easier. So yeah, in order to mitigate for the fact that they are much less able to guarantee players will be leaving summoning signs to help you with, they have um, introduced two new mechanics to deal with that. One are the um, penitent stakes that you can activate, which gather up all of the summoning signs in the area people may have left in different places and redistribute them to right in front of you. And the other is having this like weird little Pokemon mini game where you collect up all of the different spirits that you find throughout the game and you can summon them to help you in combat. And... Ah, oh, shit, I died somewhere where there's like eight of these guys, didn't I? Fuck. Um, and that means that you will always have some assistance to summon into every fight. I think every single optional boss I've fought so far has had... Um... Oh, it's up, it's up there, fuck. Are you kidding me? Jesus. Uh, every single optional boss I've fought so far has had the ability to summon uh, my own NPCs, and I think the one that didn't had a uh, had a plotline NPC summonable. So, yeah, uh, I almost feel like that mechanic was included solely to mitigate for the fact that they couldn't uh, guarantee that you would have assistance when you needed it, which again is something that is only the case because they chose to make this an open world game. One of the things I've noticed while I've been playing this is that it's not actually making me nostalgic for the Souls games or for any of From Souls other games. What's actually making me nostalgic for is, of all things, the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. Something about the trees really remind me of Oblivion, and something about the sort of rolling landscapes do as well, even though the sort of like fucked up, crumpled landscape of the lands between is very different. But uh, nothing's quite made me want to go back and replay that like uh, like this has. Which is kind of funny, really. I did actually try to play Oblivion again earlier this this year. No, it was only just the beginning of this year. Last year, late last year, I tried to play Oblivion again. And, you know, I spent a day downloading it and modding the shit out of it and playing it. And, like, I enjoyed it. I did. But something was missing. And it's just that... <sighs> you know how things are always better in your memory? The thing about Oblivion is that it isn't better in my memory, it's just that my tastes have moved on. And that's really ironic, considering I am actually intending to go back and play Morrowind sometime soon. But I do think that Oblivion had a very specific flavour all its own, which was which is not the same as Skyrim and it's not the same as, as uh, Morrowind or any of the other ones. Or any other game you care to mention, frankly. But it's not simply, um, I mean, Morrowind is the superior choice, and uh, Morrowind is straight up on my list of... So, something I'm planning on doing this year is revisiting a lot of old games. Um, I'm going to stream a, pl a full playthrough of um, me getting absolutely murdered by Vikings, because I wasn't paying attention. Did, did he get a... Did he get a bottle refill for killing me? Uh, how are these games? How are how are the Elder Scrolls games? Morrowind is one of my favorite games of all time, and uh, is still on the, like the top of the list of my favorite games of all time. It is the Elder Scrolls game that has aged the best, I think. 
uh, unlike Oblivion, which has aged very badly, and Skyrim, which has aged well, but is everyone's played it a hundred times already. Oh, how far back will I go? Uh, well, that depends. I'm actually also thinking about playing some of the really old Might and Magic games. Um, but I probably won't go all the way. Oh, hey, that's a golden-eyed one. I'm just going to murder this guy and leave. Or completely fail to murder him and leave, which is really the most embarrassing thing that a murderer can possibly do. You know, you, you wander back into your secret serial killer hideout and you're just like, God, that's so embarrassing. I can't believe I left a witness. Oh God, it's not even a murder, it's just an assault. All the other serial killers are going to start laughing at me. But yeah, so um, in terms of like, I'm probably not going to go earlier than the mid 90s for the most part. Um, because I'm thinking about the original Thief, I'm thinking about the original Deus Ex, which was 2000, of course. Uh, I'm mostly thinking about the second half of the 90s. I might try and play some of the, uh, some of the, uh, pixel art's the wrong word, 2D art, I guess, uh, Might and Magic games, but probably not, because they're really hard in not a way, in a way that I don't find fun. I actually thought about um, getting Bard's Tale earlier this year. I think this might just be the year I go back to my roots and play a bunch of old games, some of which I love and remember fondly and some of which I missed. But yeah, so... Um, in addition to playing through a bunch of more action-y games that I remember very fondly, like Thief, like Deus Ex, because of course the Immersive Sim is one of the things that I will not shut the fuck up about on my on my channel, ever. Um, gonna go back and finish that Dishonored playthrough one day, definitely. The earliest Might and Magic I know I'll play is um, 7, but the earliest ma Might and Magic I might play is probably the first zine one, which I think is like 5 or 4 maybe? Why the hell are the rest of these obelisks? Uh, I have heard of a game called Gloomwood, but I don't know what it is or what it's about or anything. I just literally just know the name. Um, oh, old FPSs I've thought about going back to, but I tend to not be very good at them, so. I did actually play Doom for the first time ever last year, towards the end of last year. Or earlier this year, maybe? I forget. Which is kind of hilarious when you consider that my whole deal is that... I'm I'm the art critic gamer who, who talks about the art of games and how what they're like critically. To kind of never have played something foundational is fascinating. Oh, is Gloomwood the one with like a there's like a child you have to look after, right? Um and uh and you have like a sleep crossbow or maybe just a murder crossbow. I think that uh, Might and Magic 7 is probably the best one to play as a modern a modern player coming to it fresh. Uh, there's a really interesting line in the history of, of gaming. In fact, I talk about, I think I talked about this in one of my um, Might and Magic Dark Messiah streams, but there is just this interesting sort of uh, bloodline going on there because the uh, first person Might and Magic games, even going back to the old 2D ones, are a direct through line to modern first person and third person action adventure RPGs like a Dark Souls or like Skyrim. Um, which is really fascinating. Um, Might and Magic 7 and 8 sort of being the last gasp of attempts to do those games in first person in the old style before they switched over to using full 3D models. Oh, come on. <sighs> one day one of these guys will fail to get the stun lock on me when I'm not paying attention. But today is not that day. But yeah, so in terms of like the actual list of games I want to play through on, on consistent streams uh, over the course of this year, like as in do a full streaming series of, not simply just dip in and out of, um, Morrowind is on the list, but not the highest priority, also Fallout New Vegas, because it's one of the greatest RPGs ever made. Um, also, also... 
Hang on, let me just make sure I grab my blood stain. Also, Thief and the original Deus Ex, both of which I will be playing through sooner rather than later. Very, a lot sooner rather than a lot later. Uh, Morrowind, as I've said. There was uh, there were a few others, but I can't remember what they are off the top of my head. I might <laughs> I might play Giant's Citizen Kabuto just because it's so weird and so strange. Um, but in addition to that, I'm probably going to stream games I've played in the past rather than ones I'm coming to completely fresh because... Um, the problem with blind let's plays is that I might get stuck, and then that's bad radio. On the other hand, it's really interesting, I, well, I think it's probably interesting for other people to see my reactions and opinions live as they happen, as I develop a critical opinion on something that I haven't experienced previously. Um, I know that there's been some enjoy- that's too high, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Which one's this MAC? Oh, well, the problem with Alpha Centauri is that um, I mean, I don't really, I don't really let's play or stream games that don't have a kind of like a consistent set narrative to play through from start to finish. Um, I obviously, I I enjoyed Alpha Centauri a lot when I was a kid, but I um. I'm not certain how I would how I would do a let's play of that because of course there's always the risk that I kind of get myself in an unwinnable position. Um, on the other hand, I might actually do a playthrough of the original uh, the original XCOM, which I didn't play as a kid, but which I love as an adult. About once a year, maybe once every year and a half, I go back and. Um, Download XCOM and open XCOM and I have a playthrough and I usually die terribly, although the last time I did it I did, I think, make it to Cybertron and then everybody died and that was the end. Not Cybertron, Cytronia? Cydonia? No, that's a real place. Whatever the alien planet that you're coming from in that game is called. Why the hell are the last obelisks? Yeah, see, my the, my idea when I first started streaming, uh, I'm responding to Morak here in case anyone's worrying, wondering, uh, but my idea when I first started streaming was that it would give me the opportunity to do what I do with my main Let's Play series, because for anyone who doesn't know, I consider my YouTube Let's Plays and my streams to be kind of a different disciplines. Um, my YouTube Let's Plays tend to be quite heavily researched and carefully planned, if not... Um, like, I don't script them, but I, I do plan them very carefully. So, I had hoped that, um... Yeah, my intention was, well, there's a lot of games that I can't do. Because over the first year or so of, uh... Actually, not even over the first year. What I realised, based on having burnt out on being uh, a, a Let's Player back in 2017, I think... Uh, what I realised was that committing to a project which will take a year to complete, uh, like a 40-hour game, will probably take about a year to complete. I think Dark Souls took a year to complete, and that was about 50 hours. It means that I will inevitably get burnt out and miserable. Um, and so I, I imposed this structured limit on myself that I would not do a full let's play. I would not do my in-depth, highly critically and analytical, heavily researched style of let's play on games that were over 20 hours. I make some exceptions up to maybe like 25 hours, depending on the game. Um, but the combination of a, a specific um, narrative to play through and it not being too long is really important to my working process. Um, and so then I was like, well, there's all these other games that I love and that I have critical opinions of that I want to share with the world. Ow, motherfucker. What's your deal? Why would you- Ow, stop it. Something, something, getting pierced by a naked woman, blah, blah, blah. We can take the loot jokes as red at this point, right? Bye. I hope I still get loot. Oh, shit. <laughs> I nearly got Dark souls -ed.
I guess I should start paying attention again. Uh, anyway, what the fuck was I talking about? So yeah, I have these, I have a um, very specific list of criteria that I use to, um, to decide which games I will let, like do, do a full let's play, let's play of, because I want to do the, the thing that I do. My special, my, you know, my unique selling point is that I do a lot of research and I develop a critical opinion and I talk about the way the game achieves its artistic goals or fails in them and its, you know, historical position as a work of art, as part of the development of, um, the medium. So, if, ahem, this is not the first one of these guys I've seen. This is actually the second giant corpse on a statue that I've seen. Uh, you lost me with that one, Morik. I think that one's just one step removed from being a nice smooth pun. But, um, yeah, so. That's why I selected Bayonetta. That's why I selected, uh, Mor uh Mirror's Edge. That's why I selected... Uh, what's another game I've let's played in the past year? A uh, year or two. Dishonored. Um, and so after that position, I was like, okay, but what about all the other games that I really love and I have opinions on and that I want to talk about? I can't commit to doing my three episodes a week thing for something that will take more than like three or four months because I'll burn out and get fed up. So I'll do streams. I'll still do my thing of talking about the design and the art and analyzing things and all of that stuff. But instead of having heavy research and carefully planning it all out, I'll just, I'll say the stuff that's in my head and do a little bit of research. Um, and for the most part, that's worked out. So that's, I kind of consider that to be the two disciplines of the the, the content that I make. The streams are still doing critical stuff, but are, are looser and, and less specific and much less planned. Why did that tell me to target lock? What's what's hiding here? So, something here needs to be hit from it from range. Oh. Oh, that's enemy. Okay. What happens if I shoot it? Um, but then of course. Huh. Well, you don't see that every day. But yeah, so I feel, I see myself as having these two different disciplines. Um, and then also just like, you know, random funsies streams where I'll maybe stream some CK3 or whatever. Um, without the same kind of like critical rigor, let's say. Oh, well, now I have to go down there and get whatever that is. I hope I can find my way back up nice and safely. Yes, and with borrowing your DLCs. Um, so, what I would be hoping to achieve with uh, streaming things like uh, things like Thief and Deus Ex would be to um, be able to do part of what I want to do. I, I want to be able to do them the justice of a full, properly researched, well-made, uh, critical let's play. Do my thing that's kind of halfway between let's play and halfway between, well, halfway between let's play and video essay, which is what my proudest works have been. The Pretty much all of the Dishonored series actually made good on that. It was funny and it was informative and it had good critical opinions. Similarly, uh, my Mirror's Edge let's play did that as well. Um, and anyone who is watching who doesn't already follow me, please follow me. Uh, go check out my YouTube channel if you haven't already, which is where you can find those extremely well-made Let's Plays, although I'm on a little bit of a hiatus at the moment due to lots of dental pain uh, and a fucked up hand also, though that's to a lesser extent. Ooh, a new wet blade that will let me put new things on my... Ooh, an imp door that will let me find new things to... Ooh, etc, etc, etc. Is that an opponent or an I bet that's an opponent. I'm pretty sure neutral NPCs can't be target locked. Sneaky sneaky gets it done.
so yeah, that's kind of like my whole uh, ethos as a as an internet video creator, I guess. Uh, In-depth let's plays that are halfway between video essays and let's plays and streams that are more just me playing through a thing and talking about why I think it's great. But that is one of the reasons why I, this year I really want to go back to a bunch of old stuff that I love and... Oh, treasure chest. Uh, and I can't do them the justice that they deserve with a uh, a full in-depth let's play, but I can give them better than nothing by by streaming them. Also, I will probably do an Elden Ring stream. Like, this isn't like a, a stream stream. This is... This is me farting around with where I'm at in the game currently. I will probably do a consistent full Elden Ring playthrough. However, I'm not going to do a lot of side questing in that. I'm just going to zip from, you know, critical path objective to critical path objective until I, you know, complete it. Otherwise, I'll be at it forever. Well, yeah, see, it's difficult because, like, it's hard to talk about why... Because Elden Ring's good. It's great. It's fine. Like... You know, 80 plus, easily. Like, I would give this game 80 plus. Um, but I wouldn't give it 90, and I wouldn't place it as better than Dark, you know. It's... <sighs> I mean... It's hard to say whether I would I would place it as better than the original Dark Souls. I don't think it's better than Dark Souls 3. But I, I also feel bad for how much complaining I've done about it while I've been streaming it. Because, you know, I have played it for 80 hours, but then I did play, like, 50 hours of that goddamn... Assassin's Creed Aragorn game, or whatever the fuck it was that I was playing um, a few months ago. Middle Earth Shadow of Wardor, let's say. Um, I will either do that stream as uh, using the New Game Plus save of this character, or I will start over with a completely new character. So um, it's either going to be literally the same character through New Game Plus, or it's going to be Excuse me, something totally different. Which I guess is basically the same as saying, you tell me, who knows? Hmm, it doesn't look like there's a way back up. I really want to find the rest of those obelisks, though. But uh, yeah, I'll have to think of a good name for whoever it is. This this sorceress is called uh, Chanterelle because I don't think I no I didn't get them all because the the when you get the last obelisk it pops up and says you know congratulations you have unlocked a new boss to fight. Um, the carcass that the giants were chanting on top of did not. Ouch. Maybe I should go back to using a shield. I used a shield for like the first 30 hours and then I realised I just had stopped using the shield. <laughs> so I unequipped it because I was just dodge rolling everything. Well, where the hell did that attack come from? I'm actually kind of tempted to go back up to the surface and uh, explore a completely different... Something incredible ahead, but no item ahead. Okay, that's interesting. Is that the incredible thing? What even is that? Is that one of the... No, that's where we were before. That's where we started this area. Oh, aha. Uh -huh. Interesting. Oh, that's where we first got into Sea Offer River. Hours and hours and hours and hours ago. You know, 70 hours ago when I first came down here. Did I miss an item? Is that an item? No, that is a shiny rock. Oh, fuck. <laughs> that was close. I nearly died. Motherfucker, was that in... Is this guy... Tr was that guy trolling me? Was that a clever trick? Was I supposed to just be looking over there trying to see what the amazing thing was while I... Oh, shit. Okay. Right. Interesting. This guy's got a heavy shield, which means I'll probably never break his poise, even if- Oh, well, okay, no, I will will break his poise and viscerally eviscerate him. Ah, okay. I kind of would like to do- I, I would like to try PvP one time. 
but it's going to take a while for me to get back up there. What password should I use to summon you? Isn't that how that works? I need to summon you with a password? Actually, something else that bothers me about the design of Elden Ring as opposed to the designs of the Souls games and Sekiro is that those games are so carefully put together, whereas this you can approach in sort of any order, which means that there are necessary compromises made on the... Uh... Wait, you can toggle the map? How? <gasps> oh my god, this changes everything. Every time I've come down here, I've had to go up and down the lift. I had no idea you could just... <gasps> Oh my god, you are wonderful. Thank you so much, Art. You have just saved my goddamn life. Anyway, uh, where am I going? Gate Town. That's over here. Gate Town Bridge. Gate Town North. East Gate. Which bridge did you mean? Also, I'm about the smallest name it is possible to have as a streamer. Gate Town Bridge. Uh, over here, like? Oh wait, is this Gate Town Bridge? Haha! -ha! So yeah, I think I'm happy to take a break from exploring Nokron. In fact, I might do Nokron by myself later, I don't know. It depends, because this, as I said, is not going to be a playthrough uh, playthrough. Play this is going to be a uh, dipping in, in and out so you guys can see what I'm up to uh, on this, my personal playthrough. I'm so glad I didn't commit to doing a blind stream uh, playthrough of this game because, my god, I'm two thirds of the way through the game, maybe, and I'm 80 hours in, like, I would lose my fucking mind. I'm not sure with Steam friends, does that make it easier? I don't, I've, I've literally never actually done intentional PvP. I, the system's different in this one than in the previous games. I should probably min-max my equipment quietly while you're not paying attention. Okay, we'll take those. What else do we want? Do I have enough weight limit? I do. I could definitely do with some better poise, I think. Can I put some pants on? Nope, it's not in the budget. There's nothing more tragic than the phrase no budget for pants. Hmm, sorcery, knight sword. <laughs> Actually, I could be terrible, I could be awful. Where's the goddamn thing gone? Haha, ha, sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Where? In my enormous arsenal of every weapon I found in the game so far, because I keep all of them, because they all have little snippets of lore attached. Uh, aha, there we go. Hee 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 hee. No, no, don't worry, it's fine. I'm just, I'm just here planning terrible things. I wish I could put pants on. I can't tell you how much I... Well, I'm, actually, maybe I could put pants on. It's just occurred to me. I could put pants on. I, I should put pants on. I probably should be wearing pants. Assuming I can find a pair that are light enough, even with the Arsenal goddamn medallion, which apparently there isn't one. That's, that's ridiculous. I've put so many points into stamina, and, I, and I'm using the... Arsenal plus one, and I still can't wear pants with an armor set. It's ridiculous. What happens if I get rid of my cuffs? Can I? Oh, okay. I can. I can wear the lightest pairs of trousers in the game. There we go. It looks like someone stole my legs. Whatever. <laughs> Strictly better than nothing. This is ridiculous. I'm honestly, I'm tempted just for the sake of fashion to go back to my non-terrible outfit. Oh, that's actually not bad armor while being significantly lighter. Maybe I'll try that out. That's not bad. That doesn't look terrible. Can I wear actual trousers with it? <gasps> yes, I can. In fact, I can wear my stupid pointy shoe, pointy wizard shoes. 
Yeah, that doesn't look so terrible. The clipping on the on the shawl is a bit weird, but whatever. The medium load is actually a lot more forgiving on this one. It's just that I have this stupid brain commitment. I can't not have light load at all times uh, in any Souls game. Or any FromSoft game, rather. Can I? No, okay. Too heavy. I hate I hate dedicating a whole slot to wearing that, which is why I've been wearing uh, light equipment uh, for most of the time. Oh, which password should we use? Um, try beep boop. All lowercase, no spaces. How do how do we make this work? Is there even a, a stake around here for me to use or Oh, enable matchmaking. Is that in the options? Is that all I need? I mean, just there being a red sign, like we need to be in each other's orbits, right? Uh, I won't see every red sign in the entire world. So we have to we have to connect in some other way, don't we? I've used a finger. I have in fact tried finger, but here. I'm near the grace. Look, see, here I am. I'm extremely graceful. Oh, okay. Nope, ain't that one. Aha, right, okay. How do I... Aha. Uh -huh. Like this? Seems like kind of a hassle. Oh ho ho ho! Aha! Did it? Did it edit out the horned part of your name? No, I will happily fight you as well. You'll probably kick my ass because I don't PvP much. Um, I think the only Souls game I pe uh, the only FromSoft game I PvP'd in consistently was um... <laughs> was uh, what's it called? Uh, Dark Souls Three, in which I. Uh, signed up to be a blue, a blue phantom and be summoned to help other players when they get invaded. That was the only like optional PvP I ever did. me shown. It turns out if you use the broken PvP weapon without using any of the stats that you're supposed to set up for the broken PvP weapon or upgrading it to the highest level or having ever used it in PvP before you kind of get your shit kicked in. I want to try that again but with my normal sword. 
instead of trying to be trying to be smug and be like, hey, guess what? I've got the thing you hate. <laughs> it was supposed to be a terrible, terrible surprise, but I kept accidentally switching to it while while we were setting up. So I guess what that means it is not is that it is not some kind of permanent insta win. Yeah, sure. I've put my sign down now. So like I've 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 used that to beat several bosses that were weak to bleed damage since it's a int scaling katana that has like it's the only int scaling weapon with ble with bleed damage that I've found so far. So I've been used saving it for whenever I have a boss that is weak to bleed. But uh, we'll see how I do with my normal weapons moveset that I'm actually used to using for most of the game. Oh, hey, good luck. Also, I think my game's crashed. Uh, I've just got a, I just got a, a static screen and no audio, so. That's Crash, baby. Let's try that again. Oh, that's a shame. I'm sorry that didn't work out for you. Also, it's nice to see you. I haven't heard from you in a while. Like, I should have said that earlier on stream, you know, rather than waiting until now, but... <laughs> I don't know if I personally know any Malakais, so I don't know uh, who may or may not be here by that name, so... Huh. <laughs> Thanks, that's, that's very helpful. <laughs> All right, I put my sign down. Um, we will see if it crashes again. After all, it wouldn't be a FromSoft game without terrible fucking netcode, would it? I mean, you did try to Dark Soul. Um, you just didn't like it. So I think you should try Elden Ring since that's the, the Dark Souls for uh, people who couldn't get into Dark Souls, I guess. What are we doing? Are we... Has anyone... Someone fight me! I put all my special fighting clothes and everything. Oh, maybe. That would make sense, actually. <laughs> if I suppose if we all have the same password, we will get, like, summoned periodically. Well, in that case, I'm going to... Yep, this is kind of expected. Like... You're just, you are significant, you're just really good at games, like. Um, whenever I see you posting about uh, retro FPSs or whatever, I'm like, yep, that is a skill level I will never attain with my terrible old lady knuckles, which are, uh, is an uh, interesting fan art term to search if, you're, if you happen to be interested in Sonic the Hedgehog. But also, uh, I'm kind of busted.
Wow, the range on that's tough. <clears throat> Woof! Obliterated. Oh, can I fight you instead? I think that the uh, the stream will vindicate me though that there was a lot of uh, kind of slightly awkward lag. There was a lot of um, what would you call it? It's not. It wasn't like uh, ping ponging around, but it was. There was a kind of a lot of uh, delayed hits and hits not being visible at the right time. Oh no, are you going to slay me with that goddamn katana? Actually, can I just spend my souls real quick? Level up. Uh, I've been putting points in strength because I want to switch to the int scaling greatsword since I'm very pleased that such a thing exists. Anyway, it's time to switch games and play art souls. How do you summon multiple people? Oh, like I would summon you both as uh, allies and then that would automatically open me up to uh, enemies being summoned in. That's right, isn't it? Last time I was playing Dark Souls 3 regularly and I was doing the PvP stuff, I was still specialized as a sorcerer and so few people play PvP as a sorcerer that I could generally just take people by surprise. <laughs> Oh, nice. Very um, Tom Cruise in that one samurai movie. That's not the Moonvale katana, is it? Oh, I should probably upgrade to the new glint blade that I have. Oh, hey, we can heal. It wouldn't let me do that uh, against uh, against Gwyn. I played a lot against, uh, against a lot of Madness Eye things earlier today, so... Wowzers! Okay! I feel like if you're gonna kill me with an, a one-hit EI, I should... Uh, be allowed to stand there for a second and then fall in half. I love that my viewer count has dropped by literally 
Everyone had respect for me when I was doing PvE, and then the minute I try and do PvP, everyone abandons me. I don't suck at video games, but I do suck at PvP. This has been a consistent thing that I've always said whenever I've been playing a game that has any multiplayer aspect. I thought I was doing okay, but that, uh, that EI really got me. Anyway, I have now hit two hours, so I think I'm probably going to actually call it a night here. Um, a, I shouldn't be sitting down doing one thing in front of my computer for more than like an hour and a half as it is. B, I shouldn't be talking for more than two hours or I will definitely hurt my voice and not be able to stream as regularly. So having been thoroughly shown up, I have had a fun time streaming for you all. I have also had a fun time getting my ass completely handed to me after it's been severed by uh, the beautifully folded katana blade of the Far East. Sure thing. It will probably be Tuesday that I next do a, a voiced stream, although I might do more uh, commentary free streams on tomorrow, maybe, because um, I actually had a pretty fun time doing that earlier today. I'll catch you all later. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming. Uh, thank you for killing the shit out of me. And thank you to my Patreon patrons. You know who you are. Props to you guys. And I'll catch you all later.